Welcome back to JSA TV Live, where we are coming to you from the show floor of Yada in beautiful Las Vegas, Nevada. We're covering the latest stories, trends, and innovations from leaders across the digital infrastructure industry. And we've got another great leading voice here in the industry. We've got Stephen LaFell with Tikajin. Thank you so much for joining us. Hey, thanks for having me on today. Yeah. So for those who might not be familiar, can you just talk to us a little bit about Tikajin and specifically how your technologies benefit the data center industry? Yeah, sure. So Tikogen is a manufacturer of combined heat and power systems. We've been in business for 40 years now, and we make um, a couple of different forms of combined heat and power. So we make power generation systems, but specifically what we're marketing to the data centers is natural gas power chillers. Um, so the benefits to data centers are, say, trifold. So the first and foremost is we're able to help people increase their IT capacity. Right, so if you look at every data center being built right now, they're giving up probably 30% of their available utility power to do cooling with electric cooling. That's a big problem, right? The other thing we bring to the table is operating cost savings. So if you look at the cost of natural gas, it's about five times cheaper on, on a per energy unit basis. So almost anywhere you go in the country, you're gonna have lower utility costs if you use natural gas for cooling. Um, and then the third part is the infrastructure of the actual data center. Um, if you think about start moving your cooling off of electricity to natural gas, now the generators that you were going to have to purchase to back up those electric chillers, now you don't need those, so you get some reductions there. Um, you can basically create an uninterruptible cooling source. So we think about ride-through as a big problem for electric chillers. We see big chill water storage systems being put in to deal with that. Um, if you move to natural gas, now it becomes economically feasible to put your entire cooling system on a UPS. Um, and your chill water storage, you know, equipment gets reduced. And so. Yeah, well, the energy piece, as you said, is, is, is just a big thing to solve for right now. So anything that we can do to innovate and, and look at things in another way is just extremely helpful and innovative. Absolutely. Yeah, so you're also the only company in the world offering a dual power source chiller right now. So can you explain what makes that technology unique and how does that really differentiate you? Yeah, absolutely. So definitely unique in that we're the only ones that do it. But I think really the, the two key points there are the sophistication that we're bringing to the table with that product. I think it's much more than just parking a, a fixed speed generator next to an electric chiller. It's the integration of the refrigeration system and the power generation system. Um, so what we do that's kind of unique is we run our engine generator at a variable speed, which gives us really good part load efficiency. Um, that's really important for chillers. Chillers spend most of their lives at part load. So you want to have really good part load efficiency. Yeah. Also the sophistication of which we choose between those different energy sources, right? We can run primarily on electricity, primarily on natural gas, but we can also blend those two sources in real time to different ratios. Um, so, and that could be done with price signals from the market for arbitrage, for utility costs, that could be from the BMS. There's a lot of different things you can do with it. And we can back up the chiller with a diesel genset because it has that electric feed. So people, some people are, are concerned about losing gas uh, in a rare case, but that could help you get around that. And then the final piece is the emissions. So we have ultra clean emissions, and that's really important, right? There's a lot of scrutiny around uh, the impacts on the local communities. So having really clean emissions is really important. And that's something that we've done really well over the years. Absolutely. Let's keep talking about the dual power source. How does that help data centers build smarter, especially with natural gas use emerging? Yeah, so there, there's no question that there's a huge power problem in the industry. And I think pretty much everyone's looking at power generation with natural gas. And then the next logical step to take is cooling with natural gas. Um, so we've got a lot of people looking at how do I take that precious power I'm generating and use it all for IT and not have to send 30% of it to electric chillers. So that's where we can come in and help with that. And I think if you look at the market, we're complementary to power generation, but there's also a lot of people that may not be looking to generate power on site that maybe could do their cooling on site. And I think it fundamentally comes down to the amount of gas that you need to do power generation for IT is massive, right? So you're talking about siting your data center next to either one or maybe two major transmission lines. Um, there's a much larger customer base that can just go to their local gas utility, get enough gas to do their cooling um, that may not be able to get enough gas to do power generation. So um, I think it's, it's a, a big difference is our market is much larger than just people that are gonna generate power. There's also the long-term viability of it, right? So most people that are thinking about generating power on site with natural gas, they're often thinking about it as a bridge solution, right? So they're saying, well, what if in five years I get access to clean electricity or SMRs come into play? Am I gonna have these stranded assets? What am I gonna do with them? 
in our case with the dual power source chiller, if you do get clean electricity down the road, boom, hit the switch. Now you're running on clean electricity, right? You yeah. didn't have that asset that is just needs to be thrown away, right? So it's really that future-proof nature of the product that gives us that long-term viability. Yeah, the long-term investment, absolutely. absolutely. Took the words right out of my mouth. That's beautiful. And we're hearing so much more about natural gas as a, as a viable resource, which is absolutely. fantastic. We need those alternative solutions. Yep, definitely. So, well, thank awesome. you so much, Stephen, for stopping by. We appreciate the conversation and look forward to seeing all of the great things that you guys have yet to come. Awesome. Appreciate the interest. Take care. All right. Well, thank you so much to our viewers for tuning in to JSA TV. Stick around. We've got a lot more to come here from the show floor of Yada. In the meantime, stay curious and stay connected.